happy Sunday and a very warm welcome to you wherever you're watching us from. Is buying a home overrated? Do you feel under pressure to put your money down for a home? Today we're having that discussion on whether to buy or rent. A little later on, do you know you can change your home to make it look fabulous and actually just expensive by using some simple ideas and on a budget? We give you those tips today on property essentials. But first, let's have a look at our property of the week, the amazing Rerota Gardens. Check them out. Hi, this is Jen. Uh, Jen is from Riruta Gardens. Welcome to Riruta Gardens. It's a four-phase project sitting on a five-acre piece of land. Currently, what you are doing is phase one, block B and block A. Uh, we have, uh, it goes up to eight floor, three elevators per block, two dedicated passenger, and one cargo. Every floor has four CCTV cameras and one refuse duct. On the ground floor, it's the parking. After this, we come to phase two. Phase two is not open to sales yet, but as we are doing phase two, we'll be doing phase three. Phase three is where we have the amenity center, we have the daycare center, we have the community library, we have a heated baby pool, an adult pool that can carry up to 100 packs. We'll also have a community, community hall that in the event you have a wedding or a birthday party or anything, we can accommodate you here. Then we have our phase three. Phase three is one residential block. Then phase four, the epic of everything, is the commercial block. The lower, the lower floors are commercial spaces and the upper units are residentials. Let's go to our show apartment. Uh, this is the one bedroom. Uh, here we'll have a steel door. We'll access via phone or via card. Uh, this is the kitchen. It's an open kitchen plan. It will come with the accessories that they, like the fridge, the microwave, a two burner. And you can see our storage. This is a glossy finish. And it will come with a kettle as well. The dining space and the lounge area. And of course the balcony. For the one bedroom, we have three options. We have this. This is 323 square feet and we have another one like this. We are calling it 1.5 bedroom. The 1.5 bedroom doesn't have the dining space. This space has been minimized, minimized to create a small room and you're calling it 1.5 bedroom. And we have another unit, you're calling it one bedroom type B. It's slightly bigger than this in terms of sizing. It's 410 square feet. Here is our bedroom. Uh, these are four by six. So a Queen size can fit. Yeah, sliding bed wardrobes for the to minimize the space. Um, our our doors are made of ABS. By ABS, I mean it's the high-end plastic that has been used to make the smartphones. So it will not warp. It will not change shape. It will be like this all its life. Yeah, it doesn't even absorb water and it's termite free. This is our bathroom. We have instant showers. You can see the rain here. The bathroom, you'll do a curtain rod here. You'll do a shower curtain. Uh, this is a studio. For the studio, we have two types. I will have a steel door accessible via phone or via card. Uh, this is the first studio, we are calling it Studio A. Studio A is 205 square feet and Studio B is 227 square feet. The difference is just the square feet. Uh, for Studio A, we'll have the porcelain tiles. Studio B will have the wood laminates. Again, it will come with a two burner, a microwave, and a mini fridge. Uh, the glossy finish for the cabinets, these are much durable than MDF because they don't absorb water or steam doesn't affect them. Our bathroom, we have the non-slippery tiles for the floor and the matching wall tiles. Yeah, again we'll do a shower curtain here. Have you 
ever entered a space and thought, goodness, this is beyond ordinary. It must have cost a fortune. Well, it's not impossible to decorate your home without spending a lot of money on expensive lamps, rugs and decor of that type. Or on the flip side, feel like you need to furnish your apartment with floor to ceiling carpets. Your house being a personal board should reflect your personal taste and aesthetic. We are going to share some tips that are going to make your house look like something out of a magazine, yet it's on a budget. Paint is not expensive and is one way to bring a huge difference to a room. Use color to give you the general feel of a room. You can decide to tone down the colors or make the color bolder depending on what you want to achieve with the room. For instance, white may give the impression that it is much higher or larger than it is and can give an invigorating freshness. An easy way to accessorize your home is to have throw pillows. They will brighten the room and whether you buy them or make your own matching colors and textures will add character to your space. If you have any of those old towels and discolored whites and bleached out colors, you'll need to throw them out. Such towels make your space look cheap and dirty. Instead, have crisp, white, fluffy towels. They will add a more luxurious feel to your space. Having hangings on the wall always makes space feel more like home. This could be DIY art, family photos or framed pieces. Before placing anything on the wall, first make sure to figure out where everything will go and that the pieces are in the right sizes as per the scale of the wall. An inexpensive way to go about this is to visit your local craft shop and get things to create your own artwork. An easy way to upgrade the look and feel of your house is to update any of the old fixtures. These include doorknobs, light switch plates, drawers and handles. They are inexpensive and those little details will give your home a high-end feel. Having a well thought out mirror placement in the house will give your eyes the illusion of bigger space. Invest in large mirrors as they will reflect the room making it appear twice as big. An interesting decorating tip for your house is to avoid using your bookshelf solely for layers of books. Mix up the books with some interesting frames, photos and decorations such as vases. Just make sure everything remains neat and clean. If you're not sure which way to go with color, simply stick to the classic neutrals. These include gray, beige and gray. That's beige and gray and yellow. These colors are never out of trend and go well with everything. You can have the bold colors on your accessories. Nothing transforms a space quite like an area rug does. They make a room more interesting and help define it. You should have your furniture sitting on the area rug or at least with the feet of the furniture touching it. Nothing gives a room ambience like lighting does. Make sure to always have natural light in the room so do not block any windows. Source lighting is also quite important to make sure to have table and floor lamps. They add to the statement of the room. So you don't need a huge overhaul to make your home look expensive. Less is more. Hi guys, are you faced with a decision to make 
whether to buy or rent a property in 2019. Today we are here to talk to the commercial director at Garden City. Her name is Shiro Okobi and she's waiting to talk to us. Hi Shiro. Hi Jamila. Lovely to meet nice you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. So are guys buying or renting in this economy? Um, I think it depends on which segment of the market you're looking at. Mm -hmm. You know, we have pockets of um, different segments, be it high-end, yeah. middle market, yeah. um, what I could refer to as a low middle. Yeah. Um, so I think if you look at each uh, segment individually, you'll see different levels of activity, um, mm -hmm. renting and buying. So we're not talking about middle uh, and high-end. What is that? What does that entail specifically in this market, Nairobi? Um, so specifically in Nairobi, when you look at um, areas that we define as high-end markets, um, there's definitely an activity of buying. Um, those are your, you know, your usual suspects, your, your Karens and your Mothaikas. Um, you are seeing activity, people buying in those areas. Um, when you think about your middle markets, um, your Kilbani, Kileleshwa, um, there's obviously more rental activity in those areas. Um, and then we have your low middle markets um, where um, like, likewise there's also some rental activity. Um, but surprisingly, there's also a lot of um, buying activity. Not, not so much a lot of, but there's a buying activity. There is. Um, where there's opportunities for people to buy at um, um, the lower end of the price scale. Okay. Um, so there's less of a barrier to entry. And that's probably why you see more people buying in those areas. Yeah. yeah. Shira, is there a right time to buy property, really? in this economy of ours? Um, you know, there's, there's two motivating factors on when to buy, um, internal and external. I think internally you have to un align your own lifestyle with whatever financial strategic um, decisions you want to make. Um, so depending on where you are at, um, at this point in, point in time in your life, um, it may or may not be a good time to buy. Okay. Um, also, also um, financial strategy is an important factor. Um, taking that into consideration, um, you want to see where your financial health is. Because um, buying is not a decision, it's not only a decision that's made um, upfront, where there's upfront costs, but it's also a long term decision. Yeah. Um, you know, maintaining this property, yeah. you can't just call the landlord to come and fix this and fix that. Um, so, there's a little bit of financial strategy also internally. Externally, of, of course, you want to be able to buy in at the right time. If there's something that's the right time, yeah. um, we know no, no one has a crystal ball, yeah. um, but you can evaluate um, the state of the market. You can evaluate the state of um, what's happening um, as far as development. Where is development headed? Um, that kind of will cue you on what kind of on how to make the best decision. Yeah. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of um, development happening outside Nairobi now. Yeah. You know, where um, nodes that were not normally um, associated with um, uptake of properties. Yeah. Are, are, are properties gaining value like before or how is the market right now? What can you say about that? Um, statistically, um, when you compare the values of property today to nine, ten years ago, back in 2010, um, there's actually a, a, almost a 40% um, growth in value. Okay. Um, so properties are appreciating. Um, I think you'll find properties in certain segments of the market appreciating faster, um, particularly the high-end market appreciating faster. Um, but we have seen, um, cap you know, we have seen real capital appreciation. Um, so to answer your question, yes, properties are um, increasing in value. Mm. Where do people go wrong mostly as uh, first-time home buyers? There's a, a sense of a bandwagon, so uh -huh. kind of jumping on that bandwagon. Um, where, you know, from our forefathers, there's always been a dream of owning property. Yep. Um, and it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not a lost dream, mm. it's not a bad dream. Um, but I think really understanding um, what, why do you want to own property? You know, for a lot of people, it's um, security. Uh, that, that's a priority. I want to own a home because I want to be able to own the four walls I sleep at night. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, this for me is um, an investment, uh -huh. you know. Um, so understanding your motivations to buy in the property will help you decide what kind of property you want. Uh -huh. um, for example, if I'm looking for a property that I plan on living in for the next couple of decades, um, there are certain factors that would be more important to me than yeah. if this was strictly a property for investment. Yeah. I just want to have a property where I can get some good cash flow. Yeah. 
Um, so taking those, taking, taking that up in mind before you, you make a decision on even what kind of property you, you have to understand what you want to do with the property. Those people who kind of know, but then you are torn between putting so much money as down payment for this investment and they would argue isn't it better for me to just rent because I don't have all this responsibility that comes with the actual purchase of a property. I mean when you do the math and you think about how much you pay a month yeah. um, and how long it would take you to um, spend the same amount it would cost you to buy a property. Um, most cases probably 10 years, you know, you're sp paying rent a month. Um, in that 10 years that you've been paying rent, mm -hmm. you've actually paid close to the amount of purchasing a property. Yeah. So, you know, the biggest difference is when you pay rent, mm -hmm. the money is gone. Yeah. Um, the funny part is you're likely also paying down someone else's mortgage. Uh -huh. um, but when you buy this property, after the 10 years, mm -hmm. um, that, that money can be recouped either from selling the property mm -hmm. or you can also realize it from, um, you know, the capital appreciation mm -hmm. um, through, that, 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 through that decade. Mm -hmm. um, so if you wanted to use that asset mm -hmm. to um, leverage, yeah. so, you know, you talk about people trying to refinance mm -hmm. or you want to use that um, asset to leverage to get money for, I don't know, school fees. Yeah. Or, so there's, I think there's more opportunities mm -hmm. when you pay down, when you're paying down a mortgage yeah. versus when you're paying rent. Okay. Because um, that money essentially is more, think about it as a, a forced savings account. Yeah. You, know, you it's have almost, to pay, you have to make your, your monthly repayments, you have to pay the mortgage. So, yeah. But even more importantly, it's like you're putting money away somewhere mm -hmm. versus with rent, once you, the money is spent, it's you gone. can't recover it. Yeah. Whereas when you buy a property and even if you have debt on it, as you put, as you pay down the debt, mm -hmm. um, you can actually recover that money. Sure. Some people still argue that uh, you tie huge amounts of money when you're buying property that you could probably uh, use to buy stocks and get good returns as opposed to just sitting and waiting or looking at this property which is not bringing you anything. Um, I think the, I mean, the most ideal investment portfolio would be one that included both real estate and stock. I mean, you want to diversify um, mm -hmm. um, your investment uh, portfolio. So it's not so, I don't think they're mutually exclusive. It's not a question of investing in real estate versus stocks. Because um, as I mentioned, you, you'd want to have all these different mechanisms as part of your portfolio. Mm. Can we have it all? Um, can we have it all? Um, I'd like to think we can. <laughs> with, with enough planning okay. and uh, uh, due process. But, yeah. um, uh, I think you, know, you actually raise a good point about payment plans. You know, when you're considering um, investing in real estate, um, you know, the buyer has negotiating power on many fronts, not just on the price, but also on the payment terms. So you might find that you can maybe negotiate a plan or a payment plan um, with like with the developer that um, you can likely meet the needs for. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe understand what it is that you, um, what the financial obligations would be and whether you can commit to that. Um, and negotiate for terms that would um, fit fit that structure of what you can actually accomplish mm. or commit to. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm just in my wildest dreams. I'm just imagining a situation or a day that should come soon, you know, where we as Kenyans or we as the uh, buyers in this economy of ours are able to actually pay rent and not feel the pinch. But at the end of it all, this becomes your house. Will that happen? Can that happen? Um, so you will find out there that the developers that have such payment structures. Okay. I mean, there are developments out there that have rent to own. Um, similarly, they, they would have um, payment plans that could stretch beyond a year. Um, so if you go into the market, you'll find that those are actually options right now. Um, it is possible to um, find such opportunities where you can, like you said, rent to own. Mm -hmm. um, so just um, for, I guess, for the buyer to, to understand what options they have. 
um, you know, if you didn't understand, didn't realize that, that was an option, then now you can under you know what to, um, what kind of concessions you can ask of a developer, and that could very one very well be one of them. Mm. Yeah. Okay. How do you tell you're getting into a good opportunity, like you're saying? Mm -hmm. How do you tell this is a good investment I'm getting into? Um, well, most importantly, the project will actually be completed. <laughs> completed? Uh, you know, there's definitely, um, and, and I make light of it, but... Yeah. Um, you know, so there's less drama, because um, I've seen all these things in the market, sorry to cut you, should I, like uh, people trying to get into uh, the concepts of off-plan and things not working out, or even some non-developers who just don't keep the promise. What do you do? Um, I, I think we are going to see more um, judicial action on that front. I mean, there will probably be more, um, hopefully there will be more, our legislators will um, be able to um, create a framework where that doesn't happen mm. um, to unsuspecting buyers. Um, but to that point, I think from a buyer's perspective, um, it's important to um, make sure mm. that you don't only do due diligence on the property but you also do the same due diligence on the developer uh -huh. so you can know who is who is it this developer that you're partnering oh. with because it's an investment with the, with the developer with correct uh -huh. um, it's a partnership i'm investing with you you're investing with me uh -huh. you know you're giving me your money yes and i'm giving you a promise yeah. so we're investing together mm -hmm. um so it's important to do that level of due diligence on who you're investing with mm -hmm. um, and I think with all that in place mm -hmm. you'll be able to identify the the opportunity that's right for you yeah okay okay I hear you that's awesome and that's all the time we had for you on today's edition of the show remember weigh your options take your time when you are about to make that decision whether to buy or rent a home until next time, I've been your host, Jamila Mbogwa. Talk to us on our social media handles at Jamila Mbogwa and at NTV Property Show. Hadi mara nyingine, asante sana.